evening. It's 5.30 on a Friday, and of course, this is Congressman Danny Davis, your host for the next uh, 25 minutes or so. And of course, you know that this is Hotline 21, uh, an interactive opportunity for all of us to interact. I just had a tremendous interlude because just as I was coming in, you know, the blues singers say, when you coming in, you going out, somebody else is coming in. Well, when I was coming in, Brother Obadelli and three young people from the Prospective Charter School were here, and I got an opportunity to talk to them. And, of course, one of them also happens to be in some classes at Prospective with my granddaughter. And so to get a chance to holler at them or speak to them or talk to them, you know, the poet and songwriter said that our children are the future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride. For several years, I was fortunate to be a public school teacher in the Chicago public schools during the 1960s. I had taught from 1962 until 1968. And it is where I met uh, Alderman Ed Smith. Alderman Ed Smith and I were there together. But I had a number of other people who taught with me and several of them became very outstanding people. One went to work as the public relations guy for the New York Knicks because he had gone to school with Wilt Chamberlain and uh, knew some of these guys and those kind of things. Another one became an outstanding math and science teacher, well, science teacher, Frank Lipscomb, who then went over and worked at the County Jail School, the Nancy B. Jefferson School now, for several years. Another woman that I used to teach with, I ended up marrying her. Uh, she came to teach there just as I was about to leave. And um, I got to know her a little bit. And I think I may have even helped her learn how to teach because she taught for another 35 years until she retired from the George W. Collins High School where she was the senior kind of counselor, coordinator, in charge of the prom and all kind of other things. And back when Michael Jordan and those guys were winning uh, championships, I also would watch them at night because I would go to some of the proms as an assistant chaperone. Actually, my wife would go as a chaperone, and I would go with her. So there are a lot of different kind of experiences that people can have. Uh, nobody remains the same. Uh, everything changes. Nothing remains the same. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what went on in Washington this week in a minute. But before I do that, I'm going to actually go to the phone and take this first caller. Caller, are you there? I sure am. How are you doing, Congressman? I'm doing great. I can't complain. You're always looking stiffy. You know that? Well, <laughs> I, 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 I had a speech to give this morning. Uh, I have comment here. you absolutely right. I, I went to high school in 62. I graduated in 66. But there was a mother and father that would send you to school. I, I mean, I walked from 83rd and Green Bay Avenue to Bowen High School. Cold, snow, it didn't matter because, <laughs> I, knew I, had to, because I knew I had to go get an education. But nowadays, different, 100% different, and I'll tell you why, and you know why, because kids are having kids, 
they don't want, you know, they don't hop on our kids about going to school. They come home. They don't get disciplined at school if they do anything wrong. So that has to change. And you're just a man to see that, that you and other distinguished people and try to put a stop to all of that. But you know, the school officials tell us that the kids are doing better now than they were then. They say that the graduation rates are higher, the learning is more and better. Don't you hear them say that? Not, not in 66. <laughs> I bet you they're not higher than them. They were 90, 95%. So now, if, if, if it's 25% that's higher than 10 years ago, but the thing is, smart people like you to get it with other smart people. And let's put a stop to all of this gang banging and children having children and people beating people up. Let's go back to the great city that I grew up in. It is tough, I, I tell this you. Is a beautiful, this is a beautiful city. All right. Well, thank you very much, Chicago. When I spoke to the group this morning, I said, welcome to Chicago, my kind of town, the city that sits by a lake founded by an African-American fella, John Baptiste Point du Sabo, a place where black people used to flock to Chicago, come in here to find work, to find opportunities, to find jobs, to make progress. As a matter of fact, I remember when Count Basie and Joe Williams used to sing, going to Chicago, sorry, but I can't take you. Cause there ain't nothing in Chicago that a woman like you can do. Say, so when you hear me coming, baby, raise your window high. Hike your window to the sky. Then they'd end it to be, hurry down, sunshine. See what tomorrow's gonna bring. Today may have brought sunshine, but tomorrow's gonna bring rain. Well, you know, going to Chicago. Chicago, my kind of town. I still think it's a good town. Although people talk about it all over the... Ah, oh, we had so many murders. We had so many people to get shot. We had so many people to get killed. It's just, oh, don't go to that south and west side of the city. Oh, aren't you afraid to live there and be there? Well, we're the city. The city is us. I used to watch uh, Jack Webb on a television thing, said, this is the city, Los Angeles, California. I was working the day watch or the night watch. Let's go to the phone. Caller, are you there? How you doing, Congress, David? James, I am doing fine. How are you? Okay. Donald Trump, they didn't know who they was met. They, 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 I guess they didn't know who they were dealing with, and they didn't know who they were messing with. He still, he, he still, he still went out to everybody, and uh, he went to that, uh, he went out to that mayor, the one in London, and uh, he went out to the, uh, the FBI agent, and then he's still going out to everybody. Uh, I think uh, he probably, going, I think he going out to uh, Tammy Doug with too. I think he going out, to, going out to her for some reason. I don't know. He's still going out to everybody, kind of that. I don't know what to say no more. Well, Tam Tammy Dugworth would be pretty tough. I mean, she used to fly a helicopter. And so on, she Dumbledore. ain't no lightweight woman. She's a heavy-duty operator. Because uh, Donald Trump is still going out to everybody. He went out to the mail, and they're talking about, uh, uh, he, he the cause of that uh, terrorist attack. Why he, didn't, why he did not bring, blame the police? Why Donald Trump say why, why he going to blame the mayor of London? Why he didn't bring, blame the police? Well, I agree that a lot of people didn't know who they were fooling with when they was messing with Donald Trump. And they didn't know who they were what? voting for when they voted for Donald Trump. Okay, okay I got one word to say, Congressman David. God help us all. All right. 
<laughs> you know, I can't argue with that. Okay, Carl Jay, have a nice evening. You too. God help us all. James said we need all the help we can get when we've got Donald Trump. Let me tell you. Carla, are you there? Yes, sir, Congressman. I just moved into your fabulous district, and I wanted to invite you to the historic Rosenwald because we are planning a reunion of those Chicago residents associated with that legendary property. Well, I tell you what, wild horses couldn't keep me away if I am in town when you have it. Be sure and let me know, because I tell you, Julius Rosenwald is one of my heroes in terms of people that I hold in high esteem for what they were able to do. And he was not an African-American fella. He was a Jewish individual. And he became the president of Sears Roebuck and Company. But it was he who really put Sears on the map. He bought into Sears, and when Sears got too old and couldn't function as the president, he became president. And it was during that period that Sears experienced much of its tremendous growth. It was one of the top companies in the world. And he was a great philanthropist who gave a lot of money. But the thing that he did that I liked the most, he helped to build 500 schools for black people in the rural South, mostly in Alabama. He was actually on the board of Tuskegee Institute and was a friend of Booker Washington's. But in Alabama, Mississippi, a few in Arkansas, Tennessee, all those places. And one day we'll know why he had to build those schools. Because there were a lot of black towns in rural America at that time that did not have schools. And if they had them, they only went to the eighth grade. And some of them didn't even go to that. My father finished the fourth grade when he was 19 years old. My mother finished the eighth grade. And I have a cousin who graduated from high school by himself. He was the only graduate in his high school class. So I'm a big fan of Julius Rosenwald. Be sure and let me know when it happens so I can be there to participate. I think that Alderman Pat Dow has just done a great job of making sure that that development came online and that it's now functioning and people able to move in and live in. Businesses and other things are there. So just let me know. We'll do, Congressman, and we'll make sure that the date we select fits your schedule. That's for sure. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, so many fascinating things are going on in the city of Chicago. We talk about the gloom and doom, but you know, as a man thinketh, so is he. As a woman thinketh, so is she. If you look at a situation and all you can see is gloom and doom, and you keep pointing out how bad it is, that's the way you will see it. But let's go to the phone and see what our next caller has to say. Caller, you are there. Yes, good evening, Congressman Davis, and God bless you so much. Right, let's stay positive. I don't believe in coincidences, and those young people that just left, they're a fine example of I love Chicago, too, my kind of town, like you said. And you've helped us so much with our prison ministry. Uh, Toby Knox, every time you come and you speak for us on our behalf, 
But you just keep on doing the good work you're doing. We need more prayer and less complaining. Well, I certainly appreciate you, and I appreciate your call, and I also appreciate those individuals who can look at our brothers and sisters who are incarcerated or have been incarcerated. You know, I was reading the Bible, and the good Lord said, when I was hungry and you fed me, when I was sick, you, you looked after me. When I was in prison, you came to see me and looked. And the person said, well, Master, we don't ever recall you being in prison or even being sick. We don't even recall you being hungry for too long because you took these little fish and and then created all that you could possibly eat. And what did he say? He said, when you do unto the least of these, those who are downfallen, those who are downtrodden, those who've had all kinds of difficulties in their lives and haven't known which way to turn, as you have done unto these, so you have done unto me. So thanks to you and people who go into the prisons and look after the individuals there and you bring hope and you bring daylight and you bring joy, God bless you and keep you. Carla, are you there? Uh, yes, Congressman. And it's a great day, a real great day to be on God's green earth. And listen, just real quick, uh, I heard you singing, so I remember you probably <laughs> was over at the, the club, the Lisa, back in the day down there on uh, Space Street. So I know you was hanging around. <laughs> I hope I didn't run everybody away. <laughs> no, but it brings back memories. But listen, I'm going to put a little humor to the show. Well, I can't wait to Daffy Duck, Donald Duck, go and testify. And you remember I told you there was a guy who like Treaty Pie in that session, our Attorney General. Uh, I can't wait till these two get together. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to laugh. So that's the day that everybody should cook popcorn and remember the days of the cartoons. I mean, it's going to be something. And you know what I heard something today? Don't be surprised one day you might see that man in handcuffs. It's just, it's, it's going to go down as something. Can't you imagine 50 years from now how they're going to be talking about that man? It's truly something. But again, it's a great day to be on God's green earth, regardless of whatever's going on. Sometimes he gives us a little amusement. So those are the two, and that is Donald Duck and Tweety Pie. And if you think I'm kidding, just look at them. <laughs> and you tell me they don't look like that. So listen, let me get out there and hear your smurf. Sing a song about that, and then we will be okay. All Thank right. Taking the call. Thank you, and if it wasn't so serious, it would be real funny. But you know, humor. There is a place for humor in life. And there's a place for sanity. You know, I thought of this guy who wrote this poem, says, if you can keep your head when all about you is losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowances for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, or being hated. <laughs> and yet, don't look too good, or talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, and yet treat those two imposters just the same, <laughs> you know, if you can gather up all of your earnings 
and risk them on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and not say a word about your loss. If you can dreams and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, and yet treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for food, and your heart be broken, and yet stoop and build them up with worn out twos. If you can force your heart, nerve, and sinew to serve their turn long after they're gone, and hold on when there's nothing left except the will to hold on. If you can walk with kings and queens and not lose the common touch, if neither friends or foes can hurt you, if all men matter with you, but none too much, and finally, if you can give the unforgiven moment with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours will be the world and all that is in it. And what is more, you're going to be a man, my son. I'm going to speak to a group of young men tonight at Chicago State University that the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity has a program going and I've agreed to come and be there. But I'm going to essentially tell them that they have the potential, the possibility of being any and everything that their hearts desire to make them. That if they would only believe in themselves, and then be willing to do what is necessary. If you don't have nothing but mud and you're cooking, make mud pies. <laughs> you may not want to eat it, <laughs> but make mud pies. Dream. Dream high. And always know that you're going to be a winner and never a loser. Another poet said it this way. He said, if you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win but think you can't, it's almost a cinch you won't. If you think you'll lose, you've already lost. For out in the world we find success begins with the fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, Cavaliers, <laughs> you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can win the prize. Life's battles don't always go to the faster, a smartest man. But soon or late, the woman who wins is the one who thinks she can. Think positively and be a winner. Think that you can overcome any obstacle that you can defeat any foe, that you can become what the good Lord has endowed you to be. Be good to yourself. Be good to somebody else. 
help make the world a better place in which to live. We'll see you next week.